Welcome to Ignite's introductory on our Embroidians embroidery software. In this video, we will go over how to use the Create tools to make an embroidery file. Before we get started, we need to select our hoop sizes from the Preferences window. You will see a large list of hoop sizes. For our machine, we will be using either the 5x7 or 6x10 inch hoop. This view shows the hoop sizes in millimeters, but after selecting one, you can see inches in the details. Once you've selected the appropriate size, click Apply and then OK to close the window. To begin creating, activate the Create tools by clicking the Create button at the top. First, we want to import our reference image by clicking on Image at the left of our new toolbar. Navigate to your file and click Open. You'll now see your image in the middle of your embroidery window. Using the slider on the right, I'm going to zoom in on my image a bit. Since we want to draw on top of our image, I want to reduce its opacity. Click on the image in the layer panel and then reduce the transparency slider. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Draw With Points tool. To create a shape, start clicking occasionally around the shape. The software will create the curves as you go. All of these points and curves can be adjusted later, so don't worry if it's not exactly how you want. When you get to the end of a shape, click on Open Close Outline to connect the first and last points. From this point, you can now refine the shape by clicking and dragging the curves. You can also click on a point and move its position, or adjust the curves by dragging the bezier handles. If you ever want to remove a point, you can simply double click it. Alternatively, if you need to add a new point, you can double click the line wherever you'd like to add one. Once the shape is the way we want it to be, we then need to decide what type of stitch the machine will use. Up in the toolbar, there is a list of stitch types. For this shape, I would like to use the fill stitch. The artboard will update to display your shape accordingly. You will now see a large properties panel where you can fine tune the settings for your chosen stitch type. I'm going to begin by opening the color tab to choose a color closer to what I want. When you double click on the color box, you will get a pop-up for choosing a color. If you have a specific brand of embroidery thread, you can select it from this drop-down to see all of the specific color options. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what you choose because you can just put whatever color you want into your machine at each step. I'm just wanting this to be some form of pink. So I'll pick a pink I like and figure out the specifics later when I look through my threads. Now that the first shape is finished, I want to temporarily hide my stitches. That way I will be able to see my image again so I can draw my next shape. To do that, I'll just click this button to toggle my stitch visibility. I'll select the Draw With Points tool again and start on my next shape. Click Open Close Outline again to finish the shape. Just like before, while we have that shape selected, we can double click on the color to choose what color we'd like it to be. I want this area to be filled in with white. So we'll select for this to also be a fill stitch. None of this is showing up on screen because I still have the preview turned off. I'll toggle that back on so we can see a sample of what it will look like. Now let's delve into one of the things you can customize with the fill stitch. In the properties panel on the right, there are a ton of settings that can be adjusted. For fill stitches, one of those settings is to change the pattern. You can click through these to see which one fits your design best. I'm going to choose texture so it will be a little different from the petals. 
You can also click and drag this yellow circle to adjust the angle of the pattern. Now I'm going to start working on all of the lines. I'm going to hide my stitches and start drawing with the same tool I used for the other two shapes. This time, I'm not wanting to close off the shape, so I'll move right into changing the color and stitch type. I'll change the color to black, and the stitch type to satin border. I'll turn my stitch preview back on so I can see a rendering of what this will look like. Now I want to adjust some of the properties to customize this stitch. First I want to increase the width. I also want to add a taper. To do that, I'll click this box to toggle to the taper settings. I can now adjust the line thickness to be thicker in the middle of the path. All right, let's move on to making the next line. Oh, I'm still connected to my other line. To end the path, just right click. I could have done this as soon as I finished drawing the line. To delete this extra anchor point, I can just double click it. I'll continue repeating this process until I have all of the lines I want to embroider. When adding objects, pay attention to this layers panel. The embroidery machine will stitch these objects from top to bottom. It's best to try to group any light color objects together to avoid any unnecessary color changes. A couple final things I want to go over. Once you're finished with your design or periodically while making it, you can click on this density map button. This will show you the density of your stitches. If you are layering a lot of shapes on top of each other, you'll start seeing a lot of red. The color coding goes from blue to green to yellow and then to red. I was a little concerned about this center circle because of the amount of red showing up here. If you're stitching on top of a really dense area, there's a higher chance of failure or breaking the needle. So you wanna be careful of that and maybe adjust your design a bit. This ended up stitching out all right, but if there were more red, I would have needed to make some adjustments. To see this view, that was by clicking this density map button at the top here. You can also click it again to see a different view but I think the color version is the easiest way to see where the risky areas are. Click it one more time to get back to the original view. Another thing you can do is click this Stitch Simulator button. This will show you the process of the project on a timeline slider. It's organized by the layers you put it over here. First the pink, the white, and all the blacks. So this is an easy way to see if you have any unnecessary color changes. This project is laid out well, so we'll do all of the pink, all of the white, and then the black. Once again, we see that by clicking this Stitch Simulator button here. Just click it again to get out of it. All right, I'm now finished. To save my file, I'll click File, Save As, Stitch in Working. This will save a file I can upload to the machine, as well as a file that I can continue editing here. Once that's saved to a flash drive, we can move over to the embroidery machine. 